So hi, it's Ken again. So welcome to these uh, beautiful surroundings. Uh, and today we're going to do some some more standing. We're going to do some. Uh, we're going to do this prop push uh, standing posture. So we get straight into it. So head as if suspended from above. Imagine you have that long ponytail on the top of the head that's tied up to the rafters or up to the heavens. Pelvic area is tilted forwards, feels like it's hanging down from that suspension from above. Sink the ribs to fill the lower back, sink the chest to round the upper back. When the arms are, because we are going to bring the arms down a little bit, when they are close to the body, make sure you have a small gap underneath each arm, as if, as if you're cradling a small bird's egg underneath there without crushing or dropping the eggs. Okay, feet parallel. Uh, so the same distance between the inside of the toes, the heels and the knees, but you could, if you really want to, turn the toes out ever so slightly. It's not chiseled in stone. And again, this next one is not chiseled in stone. I've been working on uh, the, the dividing each foot into two triangles, a triangle from the ankle to the heel to the balls of the feet, and from a, a triangle from the ankle to the balls of the feet to the toes, two triangles. I've been working on having 70% of the weight towards the triangles at the rear of the feet, 30 towards the triangles at the front of the feet. Again, but this is not chiseled in stone. Some people prefer to have more weight towards the front of the feet, but this can put uh, a lot of pressure onto the knees if you're not careful. And this, this distribution that I do uh, is, I believe, uh, much better for your knees. But anyway, into it. So sinking down. So bring your arms up into the, uh, the, the prop and hug, the embrace posture, the hunyan, the sphere, and then just turn your hands over. Little, your index fingers want to be about the same height as your eyebrows. Uh, index fingers pointing in towards each other, thumbs pointing down towards the floor, uh, the other three fingers or the six fingers pointing up. Relax your shoulders, sink the chest, round the back, sink the ribs to fill the back. So your shoulders are going to get very, very, very tired here. If you've never done this posture before, they will get very tired very quick, but it's usually because you're using far too much effort. You, by going through this process, you learn how to let go of unnecessary effort. But anyway, I want you to imagine. So we can use some visualizations here uh, to help our because we know, as I said in other films, the nervous system doesn't know the difference between imaginary and real. So the better you can imagine something, the better your body will put itself in the, into the position to, to perform the tasks that you are imagining. So we're looking into the distance, as if looking at a beautiful object in the distance. So in this, uh, uh, the current times when we are on, most people are on lockdown around the world, uh, we are stuck in one place, but we can imagine going anywhere, or imagine looking at any, anything. So imagine you're looking into the distance. Imagine you're looking at a beautiful object, a beautiful scenery, uh, watching birds flying near distant clouds against the backdrop of a beautiful blue sky, or anything you imagine. Looking at a beautiful, a beautiful, uh, beautiful sight, a beautiful object, a beautiful, or beautiful scenery. And imagine that between your index fingers and your eyebrows, you have springs or lightweight, lightweight springs or elastic bands. So between your, so you can mirror me here between your your left index finger and inside of your right eyebrow you have a lightweight spring or elastic band trying to pull your finger in towards your eye so you're pushing your hand forwards between your between your right index finger and your inside of your left eyebrow imagine you have a lightweight spring or elastic band trying to pull your finger in so you're able to push out imagine between your wrists and the back of your neck imagine you have springs or lightweight springs or elastic bands trying to pull your your hands towards your face and your neck your head towards your hands so you're having to push forwards with your hands and back with your neck. And do this with your mind intent. You're not tensing muscles to do this. Imagine it. Imagine between your elbows, cross-connecting down towards your knees. Imagine you have lightweight springs or elastic bands trying to pull your elbows in and down. So you're pushing out to the side. Imagine between your wrists, cross-connecting to your opposite ankle. You have lightweight springs or elastic bands trying to pull your, your hands down. So you're having to push up and out. Imagine between your knees you have a... Imagine between your knees you have a, a balloon. A balloon that's made out of tissue paper. You're holding it there without crushing it or dropping it. At the same time, imagine you have a sprint between the two knees, pulling your knees in. So you're able to push your knees out so as not to crush that balloon, but not so much that you drop the balloon. Imagine you're in between your arms, you have a large, a large balloon. You're holding onto that. It's a tissue paper balloon and you're holding onto it without crushing it or dropping it. Imagine the wind is blowing and it's wiggling in the wind. So you're holding onto it without crushing it or dropping it. All these springs, imagine between, from the, the soles of the feet to the top of the head, you have springs that are being pulled up by that ponytail on the top of the head, so you feel the springs contracting back. And imagine all these. Don't tense muscles to do it. Imagine all these. Sink the ribs to fill the back, looking into the distance, breathing into the lower abdomen. You could imagine, in this one, you could imagine that we've got all those springs and the balloons, 
You could imagine that you're in wasty water. A nice tropical sea. And imagine a imagine a wave comes comes from behind you trying to push you forwards. So you sink down to meet that wave. And you pull back with your elbows and down to pull this balloon back. You're meeting that wave. Feel the water rushing past you, trying to push you forward. So you're meeting that wave. Make sure you're not curving in the lower back or sticking out the chest. Then imagine a wave comes from in front of you, trying to push you, trying to push you backwards. So you kind of you meet that wave. You meet that wave. Feel the water rushing past you, and you push this balloon forwards, in and up. Forwards in and up. So you're stretching those springs between the wrists and the back of the neck, between the index fingers and the eyebrows, between the elbows and the knees, between the wrists and your ankles. Meeting that wave, feel the water rushing past you, trying to push you backwards, so you're meeting that wave. Then feel the wave coming from behind you again, trying to push you forward, so you sink, meet that wave. Feel the water rushing past you, and feel this balloon expanding back, down, and outwards. Then feel the wave coming from in front of you, trying to push you backwards, so you meet that wave. Squeeze this balloon forwards, up, and in. And just keep this going. Feel the wave comes from behind you, you meet it. In front of you. This is called Moli, looking for strength. So they say in Moli that small movement is superior to large movement and no movement is superior to small movement. So let's get smaller and smaller and smaller until you pretty much stop. We still have the intent of meeting both of those waves at the same time. Meeting both of those waves at the same time. Just have the intent. Relax all the muscles you'd use to. To, to physically meet them, but still have all the intent. So you're sending lots of signals around your body, your proprioceptive signals whizzing around your body. Proprioceptors inside your joints, inside the muscles, uh, they tell your, the part of the brain, the cerebra cerebellum, how your body is, how your body is uh, balanced. You have what are called sensory neurons and motor neurons. Sensory neurons come from inside those uh, proprioceptors, inside the joints, inside the muscles, and from the fluid in the, in the ears, in, inside the ear. They send signals, those are sensory neurons, to the cerebellum, the, the part of the brain, the base of the skull here. And that in turn sends out what are called motor neurons, telling the, the joints, the muscles to relax or to, to fire, to keep you balanced. So imagine all these things, you're sending all those signals. So the muscles being told to fire and relax. But you're trying to relax all the muscles as much as you can, but still send all those signals whizzing around the inside of the body. But relax all the muscles that would respond. So you kind of have like this feedback loop inside the body, a positive feedback loop. Back loop. Sending all those signals, but relaxing all the muscles you'd use to do that. So even though you have stillness, pretty much stillness on the outside of the body, there's a lot of movement happening inside your body. All those signals whizzing around like electricity inside your body. Okay. So you can hold this for as long as you like. Let's move on to the next stage now. So you're still holding on to this balloon. But I want you to move from your centre, from the area about three fingers below your belly button and in the centre of the body. And just move the body to the side. Keep your hands in the same position you're holding on to that balloon. And move to the other side. Moving from your centre, just moving side to side, holding that balloon, squeezing it forwards. Just moving from your centre from side to side. Moving from your centre from side to side. So you're meeting all those waves, all those springs, get the balloon, and you're just moving. From your centre, from that area about three finger bits below the belly button, but three finger bits below the belly button are in, in the centre of your body. Move from the area, move from side to side. Okay, now imagine, imagine there's a big sheet of glass in front of you, or a mirror, and you have a rag in your hand, or a cloth. And you're going to clean this mirror. So pushing this cloth against this mirror. And just cleaning it. But one way. Another way. Moving from your centre. Pushing this cloth against this mirror. And cleaning it. Okay, then you can go opposite way. So the body goes one way, the arms go the other way. All the springs, the blue, one way, and the other way, get right. You can do this quite fast. You have a nice defense. 
intensive movement for you. And for those who do practice, uh, practice Tai Chi, this is very much like, uh, I think it's very much like the turn from uh, the push, uh, that we do uh, parry and punch and push, and we turn into cross hands, to, uh, into cross hands. This is very much like that turning. To me, it feels very much like that turning into cross hands. Take a breath there. shoulders or make these uh, the deltoid muscles here ache quite a bit so we'll just do a, a loosen up exercise so place your hands onto your into your lower back touch all the fingers to the front place the wrists into the lower back into the lumbar section around the kidney area here i'm just gonna rock forwards and backwards you feel a kind of lengthening here of the deltoid muscles the chest muscles. make sure you're not flaring the ribs out or sticking the chest out or curving in the lower back or the back I'm just rock it. you can raise the toes the heels. Just feel where your body might buckle here. And it doesn't matter if you do stumble as you're going through this. You can probably find somewhere where nobody can see you doing this, so it's only you. Who knows? You're rocking between that or rolling between those two triangles on the soles of the activating the plantar facing or plantar facer on the soles of feet. You feel the elasticity of the whole body, the sort of tensegrity of the whole body. So you might find that you're you buckle in your lower back, the ribs flare out, the sink ribs fill the back. Moving from your centre, looking into the distance, it's rocking. Like a rocking chair. Using so up the shoulders, engaging all the, the anatomy trains inside the body. The movement, again, this is slowly, the movement gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Don't let it stop. Don't let it slip. It's so small that somebody looking at you wouldn't be able to see it, but you can feel that slight rocking. Shifting it away. Okay, you can do that for as long as you like. Okay, so that's my film. Uh, standing, the push prop, and a bit of a, a moly exercise in between there. Or a bit of a, like, can be used as a martial defense movement there. So, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, practice it or don't, but make sure you are practicing something. It's, a, it's often called standing meditation. Though. So it's hard. Meditation is really, really hard, but really, really beneficial. Yeah. So practice it or don't, but make sure you practice something. And I'll be back in the next film. So like, subscribe, and bye for now.